Hello and welcome back to the GCN News Show and it's been a particularly busy week in the world of road racing with many riders fine tuning their form ahead of the upcoming Tour de France. So we're going to start with the biggest race of the week, the Tour of Switzerland, where Alberto Rui Costa of Team Mobistar successfully defended his title from 2012. He'd moved into third position on the GC after stage three, but it wasn't until the last 26.8 kilometer individual time trial where he overtook longtime race leader Matthias Frank of Team BMC. And Rui Costa himself won that final time trial stage 21 seconds ahead of Tanel Kangert of Astana. Rounding out the podium were Borka Mollema of Team Blanco and Roman Kreutzger, the Amstel Gold winner who rides for Saxo Tinkoff. And all three of those riders on the podium look set to represent their teams at the upcoming Tour de France. Peter Sagan of Cannondale ended up with two stage victories throughout the race and in doing so also earned himself the points jersey. But he didn't have things all his own way in the sprints. Arnaud Demar of France de Jeu and Alexander Christophe of Team Katusha also took a stage each. And whilst we're on the subject of sprinters, four of the best in the world were in the Netherlands last week competing at the Sturz LLM Tour. Mark Cavendish, Andre Greipel, Marcel Cattell and Theo Boss were all present and it was Theo Boss who surprised all of the others with an early acceleration and in doing so took the first stage. The only other one of those four riders to take a stage victory was Cattell of the Argos Shimano team. We can expect to see plenty more battles between them at the sprint stages of this year's Tour de France. Overall honours at the race went to local favourite Lars Bohm of Team Blanco, who won stage four ahead of the veteran Davida Rebellin. Greipel and Cavendish, who both failed to win a stage at the race, finished second and third overall respectively. And it was a good week for Team Blanco, who also won the Skoda Tour of Luxembourg overall, courtesy of their German rider Paul Martins. Second place went to Jonathan Iver of the Sawyer Sun team, whilst third place was taken by the Belgian rider Jan Bakelens, riding for Radio Shack. Whilst the race went to plan for Paul Martins, the same can't be said for the bit immediately afterwards. Whilst he was in the doping control, somebody decided to nick his team giant bike. Local boy Bobby Youngles from Radio Shack took the final stage of the race and he would have finished second overall, but the jury docked him 10 seconds for taking a hand sling from his teammate Danilo Hondo before making his final attack of the day. Regular viewers of track racing will be used to seeing this kind of manoeuvre, but in road racing, it's strictly illegal. With the Tour de France just around the corner, there are certain riders who you can expect to see coming into their best form around this time, and one of those is Thomas Vockler of Europe Car. It's been a relatively quiet season so far for the Frenchman, but things seem to be turning around for him at just the right time, as on Sunday, he took the overall honours at the Route du Sud mountainous stage race in France, four seconds ahead of Franco Pellizzotti of Androni, and a further two seconds ahead of John Gadre of the AG2R team. Yet another stage race which took place in Europe last week was the four-day tour of Slovenia. It was won overall by Radoslav Wagina of the Adria Mobile team, but the race was bookended by stage wins from Orica Greenedge. Sven Tuft of Canada took the opening prologue, and I'm very pleased to report that the final stage was taken by my good friend Brett Lancaster, who can so often be seen leading out other sprinters such as Matt Goss. On to women's racing now, and it was Evelyn Stevens of the specialised Lululemon team who took the overall at the two-day Giro del Trentino at the weekend. Stevens also won the first stage of the race, taking her tally of wins to four so far this season. Whilst it was a very busy week of road racing, there was also plenty of action taking place off-road, with the second round of the downhill and the third round of the cross-country mountain bike World Cup taking place in Val de Sol in Italy. The results of the downhill looked very similar to the preceding weekend at Fort William in Scotland, with Rachel and G. Atherton winning the women's and men's races respectively. In the cross-country, world men's champion Nino Schurter of the Scott Racing Team overcame his arch-rival Julian Absalon of BMC by the slender margin of three seconds. In the women's event, Tanya Zakel of the Junior Tools Team took her second consecutive victory in a World Cup race by the slightly more comfortable advantage of 20 seconds over second place Katharina Nash of the Luna Pro Team. Continuing on from last week where we told you that Brian Cookson has put himself forward as a potential candidate for UCI presidency, there's also been some news coming out from Ireland. In Dublin, a meeting was held for all of the Cycling Ireland members and in the end they voted 91-74 to against putting Pat McQuaid forward as their candidate for a third presidency. It leaves McQuaid completely reliant on the Swiss Cycling Federation, which he can do as a resident of Switzerland, but even that isn't looking simple anymore, with three key members of that federation objecting to the backing of McQuaid. 
On to tech news now, and our friends at Velo News in the US have got their hands on a number of Bianchi's 2014 road and mountain bike models, including this, the disc brake version of the Ultra XR2. It shaves 100 grams off the frame weight from the previous model, and it features SRAM's hydraulic disc brakes, as well as Vision Metron wheels. If you want more information or photos on this or any other of Bianchi's 2014 road or mountain bike models, then just head over to the Velo News website. It was only a matter of time before the very likeable Jens Vogt made our tweet of the week, and on Monday, after his return from the Tour of Switzerland, he decided to make some calculations. Just worked out that in my 15 tours to France that I've done, cutting out the ones I missed due to crashes and illness, it was exactly 300 stages. Wow, that's a serious amount of racing, 300 stages in the Tour. I think I also aged around 300 years by doing that. After some more quick calculations, Jens realised that that added up to around 54,000 racing kilometres just at the Tour de France. Impressive or insane? You decide, let us know in the comments section below. That's us done for this week, but join us again at the same time next week, where amongst other things, we'll be wrapping up the results from all the national championships which are taking place throughout Europe this weekend.